Okay, this is the first video. It's going over the ground rules on understanding the spiritual realm. Now, I think this is important, especially for the body of Christ. When you hear the spiritual realm, casting out demons, laying hands on the sick, prophetic word, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, speaking in tongues. I mean, it brings a level of fear to certain people. And I want you to understand that the enemy will use that fear because fear will choke up your faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So fear will keep you in place, but faith will propel you and take you to fulfill God's plan in your life. So here are the ground rules. I want you to understand there, there's no opposite to God. So the opposite to God is it's not Satan. Satan is just a fallen angel. Satan is not the opposite of God. I want you to understand that God is sovereign. He's in control. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's outside of time. We were made in time. So when we look at Satan, we say, well, you know, he's, he's powerful. No, a lot of times as Christians, we blame Satan for stuff that he didn't do. And I'm sure that he looks back and he's like, well, I guess I'll take credit for that. I want you to understand that Satan can't just attack you. He first has to ask God for permission. That's why he says in his word that all things work for the good of those that love him. So he's going to work things for your good. He's going to allow the enemy to attack areas of your life to cause you to grow. Let's move on. I want you to understand that a believer cannot be possessed. You see, when you confess with your mouth and you believed in your heart, that God rose Jesus from the dead, the Bible says that you were saved. A lot took place in that statement, saved. You see, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now your body, which the Bible says is the temple of God, is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. So the God that created the heavens, the earth, yes, that spoke it into existence, now he lives inside of you. So my question to you is, what demon would try to possess a believer? I'll tell you, none. So as a believer, you can't be possessed by a demon, but you can be oppressed by one. In other words, you can possess one. You won't be possessed with it. You can give it legal authority through your eyes, through your ears, okay, to manifest in your life. Let's move on. I want this to be clear. You cannot be possessed as a believer. The third ground rule that I wanted to go over is don't allow fear to overpower your faith. Fear is designed to disable you, but faith is designed to enable you. Again, fear will choke up your faith and without faith, is impossible to please God. The fourth ground rule is the Word of God doesn't give us a formula. It gives us an understanding in the spiritual realm. What am I trying to say by that? As you learn about deliverance, healing, prophetic gifts, I mean, I'm not expecting you to go out and be a demon killer and casting out demons and not being led by the Spirit and doing things that doesn't please God. You see, He also doesn't want us to use His gifts for your glory. I'm sure you see it on TV a lot. I'm not going to talk about it. He wants you to use your gifts for His glory. When you look at a formula, and we try to figure Jesus out, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 21, it was a woman with a flow of blood, and she said, man, if I would just touch his garments, faith, I will be healed. And as she touched his garment, well, you know the story, power was drawn from Jesus, and the woman was healed, and Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? 
And all these men that were thrudging against him and pushing, saying, what do you mean? No, 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 I want to know who touched me. That's power. Now we look at John chapter 9, verse 6. And Jesus spit on the ground. Does it make sense? Got mud, and out of the mud in his spit, he put it on a blind man's eye for him to see. Oh, it gets better. In John chapter 4, verse 50, there was a man that his son needed healing, and Jesus just said a word, and his son was healed. So when we try to put God in the box, just because we learn a little bit about the spiritual realm, man, I'm telling you, that can become real dangerous. So as you learn the spiritual realm, my prayer is, and above all things, be led by the Holy Spirit. And that's my ground rule number five. Always be led by the Holy Spirit. And I want you to imagine if it's, there's a young man or a young woman that comes to you and they tell you, well, I'm sick, can you pray for me? Well, you say, okay, that's the spirit of infirmity. I'm gonna bind the spirit of infirmity. Stop there for a minute. You see, now you're using a formula. Holy Spirit, what do you want me to pray for? Holy Spirit, lead me. Listen to this. That individual can be dealing with unforgiveness and God wants to deal with their heart because through unforgiveness, the sickness came. And God would rather, if it's a non-believer, a person that has an infirmity, he would rather save them because that's his priority than to heal them and send them to hell. I want you to just think about that for a moment and just let it resonate. So, ground rule number six, allow the word of God to be the final authority. I can teach you whatever I want. There's preachers that, that they scream and you think that's authority and you say, wow, that's the word of God. No, they can be getting emotional because if it doesn't align with the word of God, then yeah, it's emotional. So Acts chapter 17, verse 11, I loved it. So it talked about the Bereans, how they received the word of God from Paul. Watch this and they went and studied to see if it was so. So they received it with gladness. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you. But they wanted to make sure that it aligns with the Word of God, and that's my prayer, that you will be a Berean. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 is, study to show yourself approved to who? To your pastor, to the deacon, the elder, maybe to the people, no. Study to show yourself approved unto God. I love it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So my last ground rule is ground rule number seven. Be convinced, I may lose a lot of you here, but stay with me. Be convinced that you're a saint, if you're saved, not a sinner. I want you to understand that sinners do not go to heaven. Sinners don't go to heaven. Sinners go to hell because sin separates man from God. And Jesus died for your sins. So why would you call yourself a sinner? But you're saying, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I want to be a Berean because now, see, see, you mentioned the Bereans. So now I want to be a Berean and I want to study. So Romans chapter 6, I just want you to study it on your own, and at the end of that chapter, I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself, am I a saint or am I a sinner? I'm not gonna convince you of that. I'm gonna allow the Word of God to convince you. And why is that important in this study and understanding the spiritual realm? Listen, a large percent of Christians walk around with a defeated mindset. Listen, if you believe that you're a sinner, or you're gonna live like a sinner, you're gonna indulge in sin. You see, you're not gonna live a powerful, Holy Spirit-filled life, but you're gonna be convinced that you're a sinner. You're gonna be convinced that Satan is more powerful than God or equal to God, and you're gonna live a powerless life. Now, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, check this out, the Holy Spirit, not your pastor, not the deacon, not the teacher, not your prophet, apostle, no. The Holy Spirit is the one that will guide you to all truth if you only 
open up your heart, read the word of God, and allow him to guide you. So with that said, that was my ground rule, number seven. And again, as I teach on this spiritual realm, I don't want fear to overtake you. I want you to walk and understand that you were created in God's perfect image. I want you to walk and understand that the one that created the heavens and all of the earth that spoke this world into existence is living inside of you. I want you to understand that when you put God's word into practice, the miracles that you read in the word of God, you will start seeing them manifest in your life. 